So it's been a while since I've done a strength standards video, and I know that that's an interesting topic. I remember when I was a new lifter, I just glued myself to like Powerlifting USA to see what the rankings were, to see what the average meet looked like in terms of performance. And I was constantly comparing myself to the best performers to see how far away I was. And that can be very useful. So I wanted to kind of improve upon, add a little bit of nuance to some of the discussion I had earlier about strength standards by focusing in a little bit. So today we're gonna to talk specifically about deadlifting strength standards. Now, one of the things that prompted this was one of my previous videos. I was responding to Zach Tellender's video about some powerlifting shenanigans that were going on. And he responded. Oh, that was, that was pretty cool. And in the video, there was a guy who had pulled like over 700 pounds for rep sumo, but had a video of his conventional that was like a grinded 485 single. And I made a comment like at that level of competition, 500 conventional is such a low bar to meet. And I got a lot of comments remarking about that because a lot of people thought that that was an unfair statement. Um, 500 is such a low bar. It's such a low standard to hit. Damn, I feel like shit now. My whole posture drops when he says 500 pounds is run of the mill. 500 pounds being a low bar to hit. Sad face. Bromley, why would you call 500 pounds a very low bar slash standard to meet? My response, because in competitive powerlifting it is. It's the equivalent of a six minute mile or a 70 mile per hour fastball. Difficult for most, yes, but still nowhere near competitive. Classic steroid or genetic advantage viewpoint. 500 pounds is such a low target to hit. And then we get in this shit show of an argument. And eventually I ended up heading over to openpowerlifting.org to kind of substantiate my position. So if you haven't been to openpowerlifting.org, it's a very cool tool. I wish I would have had something like this when I was starting to lift. You can filter by federations, by equipment, by classes, sexes, ages, years, events. You can rank people by squat, bench, deadlift, or total, or by dots, or by wilks. It's really an immense amount of data that they've compiled, and it's really easy to rearrange the data, which can be very handy. If you count all of the entries they have for raw and wraps, so that's sleeve divisions paired with wraps divisions, you get 413,474 individual people. Now that is insane. I would have never guessed that that many individual people have competed in just raw powerlifting alone. And when you consider the fact that most of these people have competed many, many times, you're talking about millions of entries before you even get to the equipped divisions. So what we're going to do is we're going to look in the raw and wraps divisions. We're going to sort by deadlifts. That's going to be all classes, men and women, all ages. We're just looking at all of the deadlift rankings and we're going to see how common these deadlifting performances are in the sport of powerlifting. So just looking at the top, this is just by total. You have Dan Bell at the top. Good God, I remember when 2,400 was like an unattainable raw number. Dan Bell sitting at 2,606. That is just bananas. So let's go ahead and sort this guy by deadlift. So we got all feds, all classes, all sexes, all ages, all years, raw with wraps. And I'm not going to differentiate today between sumo and conventional because open powerlifting is a powerlifting application. So that that's kind of beyond the scope of what we're talking about today. I just want to look at how common these deadlift performances are. So we've got all classes, men and women grouped together. Starting out, we got Danny Grigsby, who just took the deadlift record. He blew Benedict Magnuson's number out of the water by almost 60 pounds. And look at this. That's weighing like 112 pounds less, something like that. Benny was 381, Grigsby was 268 when he competed. That's insane. And 268, that is an easy cut to 242. Easy cut. That's insane that he didn't cut to 242. I mean, anyways, all of these guys you're going to see are 242. So we got two guys at 1,000 pounds. So exactly two people have gotten credit for a raw 1,000-pound deadlift in the sport of powerlifting in the, what, 60-odd years powerlifting has been around. And I like pointing this out every time. These are all the top deadlifters in the sport, just ranked by how much weight they pulled. So you got Danny Grigsby, Benny Magnuson, who's the one conventional guy in the top. Then you got uh, Christoph weighing 229. And what that tells you competing in the 242s, that tells you that was his competitive weight. That wasn't a, a weight that he cut to. Nobody cuts to halfway in between a weight class. So he walked in that day at 229 and pulled 986, which is insane. Then you have Yuri Belkin, the same, 981, weighing 227. Both of these guys are a step away from 220. They could have done day-in weigh-ins and cut to 220. They just didn't want to because they had these big lifts that were more important. 
I know guys that have cut from 230 to 198 with a 24 hour weigh in. I mean, think about that. These guys, if they cut to 198, even the hit to their performance, they'd be pulling in the low mid 900s. That's just stupid. Um, Jamal Brown or again, 239. So you got all these guys weighing between what, 215, Kaylor Willem, you got 239, 227, 268. All of these guys just pulling insane amounts of weight sumo. And then you got the the couple of soul fatties. You got Benny up here, Andy Bolton. It's insane. I know, but but they're the same lifts, right? Okay, that's enough. That's enough shit talking about sumo. I told you that's not what we're here for. That's enough. Let's, let's get let's get serious, all right? So we got two guys that pulled a grand. Let's see how many people in the sport of powerlifting in the history have pulled over 900 pounds. I remember when it was like not even a dozen. I I think it was like single digits not that long ago. Now we're looking at. What starting at uh, Weir's Bicky with a 986, scrolling down, you see a few in the mid, and then you get a ton of people at 903. There's a huge like that's like a 15 way tie with number 35, Andrew House being the last person at 903. So if you pull, so if you pull over 900 pounds, you're automatically number 36. So that's still pretty rare air. 900 pound deadlifters, especially two powerlifting standards, that is a rare feat. Very, very few people in history have done that. Now let's get to 800. Now, most of us think of 800 as still being astronomically heavy. Since I've been training, 800-pound deadlifts were kind of it. By the time you pull 800, people look at you like a real deadlifter. Like back when I started Strongman in early 2000s, like most of the guys were pulling in like the 8 to 850 range. There were a couple that pushed it to 9, but that was like the outer limits. 800 is where people start to look at you like a real strength athlete, a real deadlifter. Um because it is still so far away from what the average gym goer can do. There's a point where it's like the way you might evaluate $10 million versus a hundred million dollars versus a billion dollars. As you get to these bigger numbers, even as they get further and further apart, your brain kind of consolidates them down into just different degrees of big 800 is really a big benchmark because that's where you start to rub elbows with some of the best of all time. Whether you want to look at guys like Brian Carroll or Matt Wenning, maybe not known as the best deadlifters, but some of the best power lifters around. I remember Steve Goggins. I remember Brad Gillingham. I remember all of these names that were legends in the sport that had 800 plus pound pulls. And that was kind of the, the cutoff point. Once you were over eight, you were like, you were a real deadlifter. But before I get into this, I just think of how many people I knew in my own zip code that pulled 800 pounds. And it's evident that it's becoming such a frequent occurrence that we're almost going to have to change our standards for what we consider impressive. God, I think I knew like 10 guys in Southern California alone that were 800 pound pullers. And that's just in my social circle. So starting out number 36, let's see how far we have to scroll down. We got 892, 881, that 400 kilo mark is it? You see a lot of these benchmark weights. There's, there's a lot of ties, 859. And then we see a big cluster in the low mid 800s from like 835 to 865. There's just a ton of people. 826, we're still going. It's a lot of people. 821. A lot of people just got to 800, 804. You see that a lot with, with the 700, 800, 900 mark. 804, 804, just a ton of 804s. More 804s than anything else. And then we get down to 800. We're looking at 497. 497 different people have pulled 800 pounds or more in a raw powerlifting meet. That's insane. That's, that I think is a lot higher than I would have projected. Now, Again, I'm going from like old influence, 2005, 2010 or so. If I went back 10 years, it might be that there are only like 150 or 200 people on this list. But as the sport's growing, you're getting this exponential growth. So these feats are happening more and more and more. It's becoming less rare as the sport grows, more talent comes in. So 35 people have pulled 900 or more. Almost 500 people, different people have pulled over 800 pounds in a raw meat. That's insane. So now this is what really blew my mind. Getting into the 700s, I started scrolling. Look, 799. First of all, this is tragic. All these people that pulled 799.1, they couldn't get that 0.9 pounds. Like I would have bled for that extra weight to get to that 800 benchmark. 790s, just a ton of people before we get into even the 780s and we're still going. And I think around the mid sevens, you're going to see a ton of people. 777. 755. Oh my God, just a ton of people. I feel like I've been scrolling for five minutes. Now, if any of you think that I'm being unfair with standards, understand the standards for performance I hold myself to. I consider myself a pretty good deadlifter, but most of what I do is in strongman with different bars, different heights, and for reps. 
My best pull is 725. 2,700 people have pulled that. So when I'm trying to rank myself by deadlifting ability, I can't just go by the ability of whoever happened to show up at the meet. I'm really good for reps and I'm actually really good at using whatever equipment's available, depending if they do allow us to use a suit or if they do allow us to use certain types of straps. So I'm a very versatile puller and it helps me out in strongman. But when it comes to moving the most amount of weight, I mean, knocking on 3000 people that have competed, that doesn't even count all the people that haven't competed in powerlifting, which there are quite a few. You're going to find bodybuilders that have pulled more than this. There's going to be some athletes who can pull over 700 pounds. Okay, let's speed this up. 711 to 716. And then, of course, there's just a ton of people at 705. 705 looks like it is just a huge inflection point. All right, now we're going to say, okay, there we are. 4,916 people, different individuals, have been credited with a 700 pound deadlift or higher. Now, the thing is, many of you are going to see this and you're going to get depressed and disillusioned. Don't. This should make these numbers seem, if anything, more accessible. I'm telling you, the gap between all of the people who've pulled 700 and the gap between all of the people who've pulled like 775, it's not genetics and an insane amount of drug use. For that to be the factor separating everybody, you have to assume that everybody is at their absolute limit of genetic potential and that they all trained with utmost priority, with aggression, with consistency. They weren't sidelined with injuries and on and on and on. One of the biggest things that separates people on this list is how long they trained, how healthy they stayed, how hard they pushed their training, how smart they were with their training, how easily they pivoted when obstacles popped up. All of those things together give you an immense amount of leverage when it comes to improving your placing and beating out other people. So that's what I want you guys to see when you see these numbers. This isn't to show you, hey, look how many people are stronger than you. This is to show you, hey, look how accessible this can be. Keep doing what you're doing. If you act, if you do, in fact, want it enough, you can absolutely get there. It might take some sacrifice, might take some work, and it's up to everybody to decide how much of that they're willing to do. Everybody can't be the best in the world, but I'm telling you, if I could do it, you guys can do it. I am not genetically blessed. I was just stubborn. Now we get into the sixes. Now this one made my head spin because 600 is, I still consider it a strong deadlift. There's some guys who pull 600 because they're really built for it and it didn't require a bunch of developmental work, didn't require decades of chipping away. I know guys that pull 600 that can't squat 400. So that is a factor, but I still consider 600 a, a huge benchmark when it comes to strength because it's still much higher than what the average gym goer is going to do or even see on a weekly basis. So I deadlifted at corporate gyms for years and never saw anybody pull over 600 pounds. So this is still like rare air for a lot of people. This might not be national level. It might not even be state level competitive, but in your circle, now we're getting to the point where in your immediate sphere of influence, if you're a 600 pound puller, you're the strong guy in your family, in your circle of friends, um, amongst the people that you work with. So it's a, it's still a big number. Now I've legitimately been scrolling for like five minutes here. Okay. I just got to scroll down. Ton at 660, ton at 645, 625, 606, 3000. Oh my God. 31,237. Now, before I went on this, I wasn't entirely sure that 31,000 people had ever competed in powerlifting. This is kind of mind blowing. 31,000 people have pulled 600 pounds or more in a powerlifting meet. These are not 31,000 genetic specimens. These are 31,000 people that committed to training, that got strong. Some of them are probably freaks, and they did this with a little effort over a couple of years, and then they dropped out. Maybe some people chipped away for 10 years before they could do it. But again, 31,000 people of all the people who have ever competed in powerlifting. Remember, we only had 414,000. So we're a little less than 10% of all powerlifters. And we're counting women, teenagers, masters. I mean, this isn't just like the open division. So there's a lot of people included in these numbers. Again, that should give you hope. You should say, hey, if all of these people, 31,000 knuckleheads could do this and I can't do this. No, you can do this. It just requires a little bit of elbow grease and some staying power. Okay, now we're getting into the fives. Now I'll save you the suspense. There are a shit ton of people who have pulled 500 to 600. If 31,000 have pulled 600 or more, you know a lot of people have pulled over 500 pounds. That's usually the point where people start to feel that they're strong 
and they start to get confident enough to go and compete. Now you're going to see some of the lighter weight classes, the teens and the women's divisions, and that's usually where these numbers are seen as being the most impressive. But you're going to see many, many, many times that in terms of people that are kind of run of the mill in their weight class. And I want you to think about the sheer number of people that you're about to see when you think about what I said as far as a 500 pound deadlift being a low bar to hit, particularly for somebody who competition deadlifts with a sumo stance well into the mid sevens. Okay, we're at 38,000. Nope, still in the high fives. 44,000, still in the high fives. 62,000, in the mid fives. 74,000, low fives. 79,000, we're getting there, we're getting closer. 85,000, now we're at 507. There are just an insane number of people at 507. Now the average person to get to a 500 pound deadlift, you need to be willing to grow, And of all the people I train that want that goal but have a hard time getting there, it is overwhelmingly people that refuse to let their body mass go up. If you started lifting at 150 pounds, you were not born to be a 150-pound champion. Your frame likely needs more muscle in order to sustain more strength. So the intersection of how much mass you hold versus how competitive you are in a given weight class is going to fall much, much heavier than where you started when you were completely detrained. So that is one of the most important things to recognize. To get to a 500 pound deadlift, you have to be willing to let your body mass come up a little bit. You don't have to get overweight, but you do have to eat to perform and eat to grow. Your technique has to be passable just so you're efficient and so you get a good uh, training stimulus out of your pulling and so that you stay injury free or free of little you know, tweaks and, and bumps and bruises. If you can do those things and you have some reasonable method of progression, It's just a matter of time invested. It's just a matter of how stubborn are you? How consistently are you going to rack up weeks of successful training without falling off the wagon? If you can look back over the last year and think multiple times where you stayed out of the gym, multiple times where you've gotten tweaks or injuries, multiple times where you felt run down because you weren't eating enough or resting enough, those are all of the things keeping you back, not your genetic potential. So look, we're still scrolling, 91,000. Let's take it down a little bit. Okay, we're at 501, 94,000, 97,000, 98,000, 500, 500. We're at over 100,000, guys. Think about this. Over 100,000 people have deadlifted 500 pounds in a meet. Official number, 101,285. Now think of who this doesn't include. 500-pound deadlifts are going to be very run-of-the-mill in uh, athletic camps. I know a lot of high schoolers that can do it, people who have never competed. This is very run-of-the-mill in bodybuilding and uh, physique arenas. People that have no desire to compete in powerlifting, but they do a lot of deadlifts, a lot of RDLs. They do a lot of focused work for their hamstrings, glutes, upper back, all things that make you better at deadlifting. Guys, I've worked with construction workers who just by virtue of being active, not being sedentary, have deadlifted 400 pounds. I had one guy deadlifted 400 pounds his first time ever trying it. Some people are going to be good because they are genetically predisposed. Other people, they just work their asses off by default. It's not something that they have to work themselves up to do. They just work hard or they train for other purposes or they're athletes. There are so many people who have this level of physicality. Again, it's not to make you feel small because you're outside of the top 100,000. This is to make this accessible. It should not be your goal to lower standards for yourself so that you feel better, so that you can sleep at night, so you can pat yourself on the back and say, no, 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 I did good. It is great to look at where you started and where you came from and take pride in that. But if you want to get the most out of your training, you have to constantly be forward focused. And that means having a regular conversation with yourself that, yeah, this is pretty good, but I can do better. It's a very yin and yang thing because it's two opposing ideas, but they're both true at the same time. One is whatever improvements you made that came from not being sedentary, that required you showing up and doing some work, take pride in that. That's great. And you should always give yourself a little bit of time to take pride in those accomplishments as you get them. I usually tell my trainees they got about a day to be happy before we go back to the drawing board and start setting new goals to further fuel our dissatisfaction with ourselves. At the same time, there does have to be a voice that regularly tells you, hey, this is good, but you screwed off here, here, and here. You missed last week's workout. You cut your workout early. You didn't eat what you were supposed to do, blah, blah, blah. You can do more. That voice has to be present or you simply aren't going to get as far as you potentially could. The point isn't to eliminate that discussion. It's just to make sure that it's not so loud and all-consuming that it gives you a complex over it. So I'm going to cut straight to the end, 101,000. Let's get down to 
Now, 400 pounds, this is still in the realm of excess strength. The average person cannot deadlift 400 pounds, no matter how you stratify them. So you can be pretty safely assured that anybody who isn't an athlete and anybody who doesn't train on a regular basis is outside of this. And that's most of the population. 400 pound deadlifts, 400 pound deadlifts, we're looking at 184,000. Now, this is actually an underrepresentation because there are so many people that pull 400 pounds plus that have no desire to compete in powerlifting. Anybody who has a reasonable body weight and is very physically active works a labor job. Maybe if you, uh, if you wrestle or you do jujitsu, things that require you bending over and standing up under a, a heavy load, any physique competitor, any bodybuilding competitor, anybody from any other strength sport, there are probably 10 times as many people who can actually deadlift 400 pounds than what is represented on this list. And then we go down and now we're getting into the bracket that's going to be underrepresented uh, because a lot of people, as they start training, don't think that these numbers are even worthy of a meet. It's very common for people once they start to hit those first benchmarks, their first 315 deadlifts, like, well, I'll compete when I can hit four or I'll compete when I can hit five. And again, the lower you get, the more of the population you're going to have that can do it without any training or without any focus on powerlifting. So as we get down to the low 300s, we're 250 plus thousand. That is insane. So then I went and I added up all the females to show what that looks like. This is my fancy uh, high-tech data analytic tool, my Microsoft notepad. So from everybody compiled together, in all of powerlifting, two 1,000 plus deadlifts, Danny Grigsby and Benedict Magnuson, 35, 900 deadlifts, 497, 800 plus deadlifts, 4,915 700 pound deadlifts. That was the first one that blew my mind. 31,237 600 plus deadlifts. 101,000 at 500 and above. 184,000 at 400 and above. On and on. 313,000 above 200 pound deadlifts, including everybody, men and women, just in raw divisions. So for women, we had. 10 women over 600 pound deadlifts in the history of powerlifting. Now, I know there are quite a few strong women that can do this, even to powerlifting standards. Uh, I thought there were some women that got credit with a 700 that might have been equipped. But I know like Becca Swanson had like a 670 something deadlift. So we're seeing more and more women over 600 pounds. And a lot of them aren't very heavy. If you look at like CeCe Ingram, you look at people that are under 200 pounds, these women that aren't very big but are pulling these weights, it's getting crazy. 320 women over a 500 pound deadlift officially in powerlifting. Again, there's many times more than that uh, of women around the world who can deadlift 500 pounds than what is represented here. 4,476 women have deadlifted over 400 pounds in powerlifting. You're looking at a lot of female Olympic weightlifters can do this. You're looking at a lot of CrossFit girls can do this. You're looking at a lot of physique athletes, people who don't compete in powerlifting, but they deadlift a lot. You know, they want the glutes, they want the hip development. And then this is just a byproduct of that. So keep that in mind when you're really trying to evaluate what's good. When Empire Barbell was up and running, we had a couple women, four off the top of my head, who could deadlift over 400 pounds. So keep that in mind when you're setting standards for yourself, men and women alike, 300 plus 36,000 women, and then 85,000 over 200. So I just thought that was interesting. I wanted to give you guys a frame of reference. Now, this doesn't go by weight class. If you do plan on competing in a weight class, it is important to keep track of what the rankings are so you know where you stand. But many of the people that obsess over these types of numbers haven't even filled out their frame. So keep that in mind as you progress, as you get better, as you're tighter with your diet, and as you gain more muscle, as you get closer to your peak potential, you might end up bleeding into a different weight class, which is why it's always in your best interest. Look a couple weight classes up. It's like giving yourself a buffer, you know, don't assume you have that last $20 in your bank account. Give yourself a buffer in case circumstances pop up that you didn't quite account for. By looking a couple weight classes up, you can actually give yourself a more realistic idea of where you're going to have to be if you want to be competitive by the time you've actually filled out your frame. So let me know where you guys think. Tell me where you rank. Are you surprised by these numbers? If you haven't, check out the Facebook forum. The Base Strength Forum on Facebook is absolutely free. Remember, I upload my training daily with commentary on Patreon, so you can check that out as well. Base strength, peak strength, superior deadlift, all on Amazon or EmpireBarbellStore.com. Thank you so much, everybody, for your support. Until next time, this is Bromley. I'll see you.